Hi, my name is Ian Corrigan from Rossendale Rapid Fire, and today's video is on the UTAS XTR12. Now, this is a UK spec 24.5 inch barreled section one shotgun because it's got a detachable magazine, it is by definition a section one shotgun. Now, the gun's uh, designed around an AR10 platform, it takes two and three quarter or three inch shells. Gas operated via a rod, 4140 steel barrel and bolt, and 7075 aluminium upper and lower. So let's have a look where you can get them. Where can you get one of these guns? Well, uh, first place you might want to have a look is uh, Practical Shooting Supplies. Uh, they're in the north, sort of Sheffield area. Uh, they are currently retailing the gun uh, in its black version uh, with a magazine at 8999 so £900. Uh, the Cerakoted versions that they have are tungsten, a green, uh, flat dark earth and burnt bronze, uh, so popular Cerakote colours, are all at 945 uh, They've got the 10 round magazines available for £48. They've got the choke set uh, that goes with the gun for seventy four ninety five, so seventy five pounds, and also they've got uh, Easy Mag uh, shotgun magazine uh, holders uh, for the UTAS and also for the Bora, uh, clocking in at about thirty pounds. So that's based up in Sheffield. Um, they've got plenty of stock uh, apparently, according to them. Uh, the gun comes with the five round mag, uh, comes with a cylinder choke and a choke key, uh, but if you want any other chokes, you have to buy those separately. Okay, so another place you can pick these guns up from is Blackmore Vale Guns. Now they're based in Wincanton. In case you're not sure where Wincanton is, that is in Somerset, uh, and that's uh, sort of north of Poole, Dorset, that kind of direction, west of Salisbury. Um, point to note: the guns are slightly more expensive. They're at 995, so it's about 50 pounds more expensive than the ones in the north. That's probably just because they're in the south and everything's cheaper in the north. Um, uh, and if you're going to go and drive all the way up to the north to pick one of these up, it's probably not worth it from a £50 perspective. Uh, even RFDing it and getting it couriered, it's unlikely to be worthwhile. Um, note that the guns uh, on the images here are the sort of European US spec, so the muzzles are actually a lot longer, so the barrel's a bit longer. Don't have that muzzle device, doesn't come with it, and they also don't come with sights as standard. Uh, they've got 10 round magazines in stock. Um, you need 10 round mags to compete with these guns on an IPS. C and NRA. Another good thing is they've got some nice little videos uh, that you can have a look at as well. Thing you might want to have a look at is some of the accessories that are available uh, for the gun. This is the utas.com website in the US. Um, of course, this is a Turkish made gun, uh, so um, you know it's possible to get these bits from Turkey. However, you might not speak Turkish, and therefore the US website might be a little bit more convenient for you. Um, note that the 10 round magazines are $69, so it's coming in around about 53 54 pounds, depending on the exchange rate. So, uh, for once, uh, it's actually more expensive to buy. By, uh, uh, a gun part in the US than it is in the UK, which is always nice to see. Um, the XTR flash hider here, you've got sort of the proprietary version, a couple of bags. Uh, I probably don't think these bags are long enough um, for the UK spec 24 inch barrel. Um, some fanboy bits, if you like that sort of thing. Uh, they've also got some chokes. Um, so they've got the marine choke, they've got uh, cylinder choke tubes. Um, interestingly here they've got some uh, UTAS, uh, UTS-15 um, front sights, so uh, it's quite a nice sight actually. Um, it's UTAS' own sort of design, but it's got a bead, uh, quite a large bead, um, so it's definitely a shotgun sight um, that clamps onto the rail. Uh, and on the back you've got the choice between a V-notch, so it's a little bit more like a pistol sight, uh, faster on ha acquisition than uh, the flip over um, uh, ghost ring that you see here. So uh, if you're looking for uh, um, open sights on it rather than using a red dot, now of course you can use a red dot in um, in uh, IPSC and NRA matches, that's allowable um, because you're in open anyway because of the fact that the gun is a detachable box mag gun. But not everybody likes uh, red dots. So uh, it's nice to know that these sites exist. Um, coming in at sort of $69 each, um, it's up to you whether or not you think that's a good value for money. Okay, so I mentioned that uh, 
Easy Load um, have made some mag holders. So having a look at uh, the Easy Load website, you're quite well known for these competition rigs, very popular in the UK. You've got likes of Josh Kenny using these, uh, guys at our range such as Darren Hopley, uh, um, Mick Flatley, all use the competition rigs um, from uh, Easy Load. Uh, but they've got a new product here which is the Easy Mag Holder. And these are designed uh, to hold UTAS XTR magazines and Bora magazines uh, in exactly the way that you would want to have them for you to have a fast grab. Now that's absolutely essential if you're racing, um, that you can get these magazines out of their holsters and holders very quickly uh, and get it into the gun. Now, um, they're designed to go on a standard belt uh, as, a, as a sort of design. Uh, they fit with a tech lock. Now at £30 the tech lock is not included. So uh, my previous video on tech locks tells you that these come in around about £10-ish and about £5 for a sort of cheapy bendy ones. I recommend that you use a decent one such as one from AW Armoury or uh, anywhere else you might want to pick one of these up from but actually a real tech lock as opposed to uh, a sort of cheap Chinese copy. Um, the great thing about these is they've got this sort of clocking device here that allows you to twist uh, and then lock the magazine into position so it's easy to grab. Um, with fives and tens that's absolutely essential if you're going to be racing. Bear in mind a magazine is 48 to 50 pounds, uh, the holders being 40 uh, by no means cheap but if you want to race and you want to be you know, quick with your reloads these are absolutely essential. Now you can use uh, sort of um, the types of AR10 or SCAR L or um, FN uh, FAL magazine holders, so pouches, uh, but you may find that they sort of foul a little bit. Um, it's worth trying, but bear in mind that uh, shotgun magazines are bigger than any normal AR15 magazine um, and about the same size-ish as an AR10 magazine, so 7.62308 kind of rounds, but they're not the same. So uh, don't assume that uh, if you get a 7.62 mag or an AR10 magazine uh, holder that these will automatically fit in. Uh, they're, they're, you might find that they're a little bit larger and hence these sorts of easy mag holders uh, are ideal for the job. So this is Counterfolk's own AR, uh, UTAS XTR. Um, you note this sort of barrel uh, fore-end nut there. Uh, it's not free-floating but bear in mind it is a shotgun so it's not as if accuracy is that important. eBay special foregrip there. Um, further back uh, along this sort of uh, full length rail you've got um, standard controls you'd expect to find on any AR-15 AR or AR-10. Uh, you've got the bolt release. You've actually got an ambi uh, magazine release uh, so it's big on one side sort of smaller on this side and you've got an ambi safety catch. The safety catch itself is not the propriety one that comes with the gun that was changed by Kansh. Uh, some nice little features there. You can see it's pretty well used. In your hand it feels like any normal AR-15, AR-10 style firearm. A bit like the Sega, slightly oversized, but ultimately all the controls and everything is exactly as you'd expect from an AR gun. Uh, it strips as per a normal AR-15 style firearm. Uh, the interior looks very much like an AR. Uh, it's slightly thicker, slightly bigger. Um, it's billet uh, as a manufacturing process so it's made from a very strong aluminium sort of, uh, and metal parts. Um, it's exactly as you'd expect on any AR style gun. So the gun strips down like any other AR-15. Uh, you've got the bolt carrier uh, which is all sort of one large piece with the bolt on the end. Note the operating rod there. This is a rod uh, system gun like a HK416 rather than gas in pins such as uh, an original AR15 uh, or sort of uh, M16 gun. Taking a closer look at the bolt um, and the bolt carrier, uh, this is a, a five lug bolt, so very reminiscent of your sort of style of AR-15, AR-10, uh, but it's different because it's a shotgun. So um, whilst it's got the lugs on it, you've also got the uh, extractor there on the on the side closest to us. Uh, now that has had issues uh, with some of the earlier guns as the spring wasn't strong enough. So uh, the extractor was just kind of rolling over the brass, not hooking the brass out and have it giving extraction issues uh, on occasion with the with the rounds. Uh, that's now been replaced by the um, importers with a much stronger spring and there's no issues at all with the extraction. Also at the bottom uh, what looks like of the bolt, uh, what looks like um, another extractor is 
is actually a round pickup device. Now, different to the Sega, which is that's just a solid piece, this sort of round pickup um, sort of strips around from the top of the magazine and pushes it up into the chamber. Um, and when it goes into the chamber and, the, and it's locked away, that, that little bit sort of goes into the recess. Now, there's been a few issues with that in which the spring and the pivots have been uh, sort of slightly non-compatible in the respect that uh, they've upped the spring but it's caused um, the pivot area to shear and so some of those are broken off so I'm aware that there's been a few issues with those when they first came out again uh, fantastic sort of service from the UK distributors has got that solved really quickly but it's something to bear in mind that some of the early guns do have uh, slight issues with that Looking on top of the bolt, um, the area that looks like a sort of mantelpiece clock uh, that sticks up from the top of the bolt, um, that's where the rod, uh, the operating rod, sort of sits in, that little recess, uh, and pushes that sort of to the rear. Now, there's been a few issues with the operating rod uh, becoming sheared. Um, as far as I can tell, because I've, I've been following this quite closely, this is due to uh, using non proprietary cocking handles um, and it's been assumed that this is a mil spec gun uh, but actually uh, from UTAS themselves uh, they've actually sort of pointed out this is based on the original AR-10 and not a mil spec AR-10. Now um, some people put that as being a positive I'm not sure that it necessarily is because uh, as guns sort of uh, develop and evolve usually they get better as time goes on so going to the original AR-10 um, design and then sort of building a shotgun off it uh, doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense to me. It would make more sense to build it from a modern mil-spec version and therefore you can just use mil-spec parts. But that's what they've decided and there you go. Okay, there's the operating rod that I talked about with the little lug on the end that's been uh, shearing off on some of the guns when you're not using this proprietary left-handed cocking handle. Um, inside the gun you can see the ejector. That's the little protrusion from the side of the body. That sort of runs down the side of the bolt and ejects the rounds out. So just to finish off, we've got a video of Cash Pope trialling his new UTAS XGR12 for the first time at Shield in. Ready when you are. Ready when you are. Right, we're going to run this test again with the uh, Power Red. Um, we're going to run through all the magazines and uh, see how the gun actions. So shooter, load when ready. And carry on. Clear. Got clear. Got clear. What do you reckon? Very sweet. I think it's like having every gun. You've got to get used to it. Mm -hmm. The um, it likes the power red without a doubt. The vortex scope definitely stood up for it, cut through it. The only downside I see the power red is it's slightly smoky. Um, apart from that, there's no wind today, so you're going to get it. It's also low light. But I think the gun is really performed well. Build quality is definitely there. It reacts completely differently for obviously the M2, which I'm used to, but I think as a gun to come onto the market to shoot into the in the open division, I think this is a really good gun. And actually looking forward to taking it on the circuit and trying it. All yeah. right? Sounds good to me. That's the XDR. It's uh it's a good gun. I think uh, a lot of people like the AR platform. Um, it's got a lot of different options that you can put on it, so you can change the grips. Uh, notice that Canches had a different stock in it, it wasn't proprietary. It was um, a Magpul stock, so it's got a large cheek piece. Um, all the choices of optics. Uh, you can also fit different sort of AR-10 style um, safety catches, uh, magazine releases, so there's lots of options there. Um, People that I've spoken to uh, that have had issues with them have all been resolved very quickly, so they're all very happy with their new guns. Uh, they're enjoying shooting it, and hopefully we'll see a lot more of them on the UK PSA and NRA circuits. If you've got any questions or if you'd like to give us feedback, um, see us on our Facebook page. Thanks.